asteroid warning, NASA and ESA, the European Space Agency, confirm they need to team up in order to find a way to protect Earth from asteroid or celestial body impacts to Earth. They have to team up to smash into an asteroid for a test run. This is by Sean Martin of Express UK. These recent asteroid tests have reiterated the need for international space agencies to work together to team up and smash a craft into a space rock. This is what NASA scientists have the idea of doing. Well, we can find better ideas, safer, faster and uh, quicker ways to do that. Why don't you just beam it with a, uh, a laser ray to smash it up? Faster than going there, I would assume. Now, they want to go up there, they want to smash a spacecraft into it to see if that's the way to somehow push it off its trajectory. That's their idea of what they have to do. NASA and European Space Agency, ESA, already announced back in 2015 that they would be collaborating on the Double Asteroid Redirect Test, DART for short. It's an asteroid mission and it will see the duo agency send a craft to the binary asteroid called Didymus. Didymus meaning, meaning twin in Greek. Now we know that most asteroids don't come in alone from what the astronomers have told us. They come in in binaries or in groups. So maybe that's why when the Chelyabinsk meteor struck over Chelyabinsk in Siberia and Russia a couple of years back, we also had, and nobody saw that coming, we also had the same day something uh, fly over the United States. Okay, that wasn't as bad as the Chelyabinsk, which caused 1,500 injuries and over 7,000 buildings to be damaged, mostly glass, you know, the air pressure, glass breaking, etc. So, uh, they will be sending their craft to the binary asteroid. They will be launching it in 2021 and reaching it by October 2022 to obtain uh, samples and do what they have to do. The asteroid has been, and it, by the way, these asteroids go at a, an amazing speed and the air, aircraft has to catch up to it, traveling at the same amazing speed as it does all this. The asteroid has been described as non-threatening, but a close approach from the space rock will allow the international space collaboration, known as Asteroid Impact and Deflection Assessment, AIDA for short, to test their machine by knocking Didymus off its course and by doing so, if the mission is successful, NASA and the ESA will be able to send a spacecraft to an Earth-bound asteroid in the future to knock it, it off its course away from our planet. Well, that's pretty expensive. You have to have it on the, on the launching pad, ready and able to get off. You know, that's just feasibly impossible. Let's say you see the spacecraft in a month. Okay, in a month, and you say it's coming at us and it'll hit us in a month. I'm not saying in two days because most of these things have been found the day before. <laughs> so that's totally impossible to, you know, get the spacecraft and ready and have it off the day before. No way. But um, let's say you have it in a month coming in at us. Are you going to be able to have a spacecraft ready to be, you know, pounding it? I. Still, I'm, see, I'm sitting here shaking my head saying, I can't see this happening. This is just pipe dreams. Um, whereas, you know, if you have a laser pointing at it, you know, break it up with the laser. I mean, you're, you're using laser operating on people and uh, cutting up their little, uh, you know, whatever they have in their bodies. For example, gallstones, kidney stones, whatever, you know, laser, even laser uh, operations. But in a, on a big scale, using a laser you could perhaps uh, cut the uh, asteroid in pieces instead of setting up a, a spacecraft and uh, these things cost so much money. Let's say you have a company or, or uh, you know, if it's a private company, they'll go bankrupt pretty fast. Or if it's a corporation or a, a national effort, do they have enough money to put up there, to put into these spacecraft to be bombarding onto these uh, asteroids? Anyway, what can I tell you? 
Now the recent discoveries have reiterated the need for such objectives. AIDA has been analyzing the Japanese Space Agency's JAXA mission. Their mission is to the asteroid Ryugu. When JAXA spacecraft Hayabusa 2 landed on Ryugu, it left a much larger impact crater than was expected. The essential, uh, the, the, uh, this essentially proved that the gravity of Ryugu was stronger than expected and it might affect how AIDA can move a space rock. There you go. So it came careening into the uh, Ryugu because of the gravity of Ryugu. Now Dr. Patrick Mitchell, who is presenting sessions on planetary defense at EPSC DPS 2019 said, the impact with Hayabusa 2 showed that there was no cohesion on the surface and the regolith behaved like pure sand. Gravity was dominating the process rather than the intrinsic strength of the material from which the asteroid is made. If gravity is also dominant in Didymus B, meaning the Didy moon, the little moon, the little moon is the size of a pyramid and the main, the main moon, the main asteroid, is uh, the size of a mountain, they say. Okay, so if, gra uh, if the gravity is also dominating at Didymus B, that is the moonlet, even though it is much smaller, we could end up with a much bigger crater than our models and lab-based experiments to date have shown. And ultimately, very little is known about the behavior of these small bodies during impacts, and this could have big consequences for planetary defense. Nancy Chabot, DART mission coordinator, led uh, lead and planetary scientist at John, Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory said, DART's target, Didymus, meaning the moonlet, is an ideal candidate for humankind's first planetary defense experiment. It's not on a path to collide with Earth and therefore poses no current threat to the planet. However, its binary nature enables DART to trial and uh, evaluate the effects of a kinetic impactor. Didymus is a binary asteroid, as we know, which means that one asteroid orbits a bigger one. And in this case, DART will hit the smaller asteroid, which is about 160 meters in length, nine times faster than a bullet. That's pretty, you know, that's nine times faster than a bullet. Can you imagine? approximately 3.7 miles per second, according to their statement. Every two years, the space agencies get together and have an asteroid impact drill. It's a tabletop exercise. The one that they had at the end of April in the U.S. was a disaster. They keep having them every two years, and uh, they have never been successful in stopping an asteroid, even though it's a tabletop exercise from impacting Earth. This is all the, uh, the known asteroids as of 2018. These are the ones that are over 400 feet in diameter. And you can understand that it's a soup of asteroids. If you take into account even the smaller ones, who knows what this thing will look like. Earth has been impacted in the past. This is what's just one of the examples here in Quebec, in Canada. Okay, this is the Manicougan, uh, if I'm correct, the Manicougan impact site. You can see it very easily on Google Earth. We have so many impact sites on Earth. Uh, Australia alone has over 50. They know that it's uh, an impact crater because of the mineral makeup as opposed to being a volcanic crater. Okay, so they know that Earth has been impacted so many times. Uh, the one that hit us an asteroid that hit us 66 million years ago was believed to be the cause of the dinosaur extinction, not just dinosaurs, but I guess about 90% of all life on Earth. So this, and we see this happening on the Moon, on Mars, we see impact craters. Uh, the Chinese uh, lunar rover, if you see one of my uh, uh, two videos before this, Chalk, the Chalk China rover discovers impact glass in crater on the far side of the moon where China has landed it shows that we know that even the moon has been impacted so uh, which has no atmosphere so this is uh, a priority as far as life on earth is concerned because scientists have said it's a matter of when not if we will be impacted it is a matter of when 
we just also found that by accident, an amateur astronomer, Yenadi Borisov, a couple of weeks ago, the end of uh, August found, I think August 2nd, and then by the time the space agencies confirmed it, he found an interstellar comet coming at us. And he found it fast enough that uh, we will be able to uh, observe it for the next three months as it goes by us. We can even see it now if you have an amateur telescope. It's, if you look for Mars, it's between Mars and Earth, so you can very easily see that coming uh, through close to us. That's frightening. What is it doing here? An interstellar object in our solar system coming towards Earth? That, that is unbelievably frightening. What is it do? Where did it come? Why is it coming towards Earth? Um, okay, so there are things out there we are not able to see. Uh, Borisov, it was just, just a matter of chance. He, was, he had his telescope towards the uh, uh, low horizon, pointed towards the sun, and that's how he found it. The big telescopes cannot point down that low. They cannot move them down that low, so they can't find things that are in that area. Anyway, you see, amateur astronomers do a lot of work. They have found a lot of these space objects coming at us. So anyway, I'll leave a link below for you for this. And uh, more on this as the dates near come near, close to us, as to the asteroid missions. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.